Welcome to Present Truth Broadcast with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga. Brought to you by Present Truth Ministry, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. When you, when you got born again, what happened? You see, without you receiving the Holy Spirit, because this is where... Now, I want you to please just pay attention, right? This is where a lot of maybe the orthodox and the charismatic people are different. When you go to some orthodox church and they don't pray loud in tongues, this is their, this is their basis. That Listen, you don't need to pray in tongues to show that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Are they correct? Yes, they are. But, you know, praying in tongues is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Is an expression. It's giving the Holy Spirit what? An expression. So it doesn't mean that the, 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 the guy out there who doesn't pray in tongues does not have the Holy Spirit. I, I want you to really understand it because some of, I know some of you don't, don't speak in tongues, but you are full of the Holy Ghost. Now the point is, why do you speak in tongues? It is an expression. It's a prayer language. And then the truth of the matter is that sometimes that visible charismatic expression of the gift of the Holy Spirit emboldens you to manifest the gifts. Now the reason, I'm, the reason I did this is this. If we have the Holy Ghost, now go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Go, to, go with me to verse... 22. Now, this is very important because sometimes, you see, when you see certain people manifesting the gifts of the Holy Spirit, what they have just done is that they have been able to open themselves up to more, to more expression of the Holy Spirit. Now, Galatians 5.22, are you there? Say amen if you're there. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Is joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such, there is no law. Now, the question I want to ask you is when you get born again, do, are these fruits in you? It's not a trick question, it's very simple. Don't now, you can't fail. Are these fruits in you? Okay. But you know, some of you don't have self control, right? Okay, I say some of us. You know, some of us don't have self-control. Even if we get angry right now as I'm preaching, we are ready to scatter this church. Like, why will pastors say that? I mean, that is even getting you angry. How will he say, you know? So why is it that you are not exercising self-control? You haven't yielded enough for self-control to overpower your home training. It doesn't mean that one day God is going to give you self-control. It's in you already. So what you do is you have to yield. Now, let's go up. You understand now. Now, look at this. Verse, no, let's go down. Verse 24. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passion and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another. Envy in one another. So Paul was trying to say, listen, if you walk in the spirit, that means give expression to these fruits that are already where? In you. So for instance, somebody gets you angry and you say, no, in the name of Jesus, the love of God is at work in my heart. I, I'm, I'm rooted and grounded in God's love. What's happening? You are giving expression to the love work. Right. Say yes. yes. Okay. Now, what it means, now this is where I'm going. You cannot have the fruits of the Spirit and not have the gifts of the Spirit. Because it is the same Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit came into your life, the big H, the fruits are there, the gifts are there. The question is, are you giving expression to them? Are you yielding enough? Because nobody can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. That's what we read, right? 1 Corinthians 12. 
So Paul was trying to say, essentially, you cannot even accept the Lord Jesus Christ if the Holy Spirit is not energizing you. Now, if the Holy Spirit is energizing you, it simply means that the gifts are already there. So we've got how many now? Nine gifts of the Spirit, nine fruit of the Spirit, and nine gifts of the Spirit. It's called the Big 18. Now, let's go to uh, Romans 8.16. Foundational, Romans 8, 16. Because it's, it's interesting if we start learning about the gift, but it's important for you to know that when we start learning about the gift, we're just teaching what is on your inside. I said Romans chapter 8, verse what? Verse 16. Are you there? Say amen if you're there. Okay. Now, can we go up a bit? Let's go up a bit. Let's read uh, verse, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors, not, we, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. So you see Paul speaking to the Romans. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Remember what Paul said in verse 2 about being led by dumb idols? Now go to verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Now, this is very important because sometimes in manifesting the gifts of the Spirit, one of the things that hinder us is fear. Fear. Two things that makes you not to manifest the gifts of the Spirit is fear and pride. And then don't think, as we start talking about the gifts, we're going to work on them. Sometimes the gift does not always manifest in very dramatic fashions. Because that's where some of us are confused. Right? So for, for some of us, if the gift wants to manifest, then people are going to scream, people are going to shout, then we know that the power of the Holy Ghost is there. No. Sometimes the word of wisdom will just come in, in, in form of simple counsel. Sometimes the word of knowledge will come as an impression. Praise God. Are, are we still here? Okay. Now, verse what now? Verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out what? Abba, Father. So it tells us here that we have received it. We've received the big age. It comes with its fruits and it comes with its gifts. Now look at what it says now. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So, one of the functions of the Holy Ghost on your inside is to bear witness that you are a child of God. So, to bear witness that, listen, you belong to God. Now, look at what it says here. And if, we, if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joined heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, then we might also be glorified with him. So, if we're joined heirs with him, it, it means that what Christ possesses is what we also possess. Are you still here? So there's no way Christ to possess all the gifts of the Spirit working in him, and we don't have it, and we still say we are joint heirs. There's no way. So actually, the gifts of the Spirit are in you. You see, but one thing you must understand is that even if the gifts of the Spirit are in you, you can choose to be a carnal Christian who works like the gifts are not there. That's where the difference comes. Yielding yourself. And like I was trying to tell you, these things are needed in your workplace. You can sit down with someone and they are talking and you just discern in your heart that this guy is a liar. For young people going into a relationship, man, you need all the nine working together. You just see this guy, very nice guy. The poems are coming. The chocolates are coming. It takes you to buy ice cream. You know, those things can blind your spiritual senses. Sometimes you just say, let's, let me just pray. You say, oh, there's nothing to pray about. You say, let's pray. And then you pray. Everything is right. His village is right. His money is right. His job is right. Tall, dark. Is it tall, dark now? Tall, dark, handsome. Not dark. Tall, dark, handsome. Chocolate. Brown bread. Guy is all set. Has spent his life in the gym training his muscles. He's the perfect guy. But something about the designment of spirit tells you this guy is not straightforward. 
and you can't find it. There's nothing to find it. But you know, sometimes we ignore those impressions. Bam, you dash into the marriage. Ten years down the line, it's called you married a fraud star that the whole world is looking for. Praise God. Are you still here? So the gift of the Spirit necessarily is to your advantage. So, you know, sometimes you can just download these things from the internet. Compatibility test. Uh, he's choleric. I'm melancholy. He talks. I don't like to talk. He's sanguine. I'm, what's the next one? What? Flag. Look at them. You see the, see the singles association in the church? Look at them. See how the married people are just calm because they are in already. <laughs> singles association. Okay, calm down. He's flag. I'm choleric. I'm sanguine. He's melancholy. He doesn't like to talk. I like to talk. He doesn't eat. I eat. He doesn't sleep. I sleep. And then, okay, we match. The devil can match you up like that. You can have a non-talking devil, non-sleeping devil. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need the gifts of the Spirit. Praise God. And maybe this guy comes. Like me when I met my wife. Nothing to write home about. I mean, property-wise. No TV, no money, nothing but with a big vision. You need the gifts of the Spirit to tell you that this guy is going to be the pastor of KDCC. He will be a good guy. Follow him. But it's going to take 20 years. Praise God. So when your whole family say you can't go with this guy, he doesn't have a future. You, you know, they see his slippers, but you, you see his dream. All right? And not because he's a motivational speaker. You understand what I'm saying? Not because they are saying in 10 years I'm going to own the world, in 15 years I'm going to be the president. No, 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 no. Just by the spirit. You just know. And then, so you, by discernment of spirit, you know this is who I should marry. By the word of wisdom, you know your wedding should not be too expensive. By the gift of faith, you know that things will be tough, but you will survive. Then by the working of miracles, you break the yoke of poverty over his life. So in that, that marriage project, you are going to use, need at least four gifts <laughs> to work. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, now, we might laugh about it, but that's why the Holy Ghost is in you. That is why you are not a, how do they call them now? Slay queens, right? That's why you are not just marrying for what the person has. Why am I talking about marriage this night? Now, now this is the gift of the spirit at work now. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So you just understand that no, you are no longer judging by your senses. And nobody can understand. But it's the gift of God at work in you. So the Holy Ghost gives it to you. Many years down the line, you just realize. You know, sometimes we look back to that and say, what was in our head that we got married? Like, who, who, whoever does that? You just discover that actually it was the gift of faith at work. So these things are not just for church. Are you following what I'm saying? You might be a businessman and everybody say this is not going to work. But the gift of faith rises up in your heart. And the working of miracles rises up in you. You put those two gifts together and build a business that nobody thought will ever be able, able to succeed. In the nation that nobody thought would be able to succeed. When, when, um, when uh, Isaac wanted to go to Egypt, God says don't go. Farm in this land. And the guy farmed in this land, the scripture says he reaped a hundredfold return. How many of you know that he would have used some of the gifts of the Spirit? The gift of faith. Praise God. Sometimes when situations overwhelm you, what happens? You kick into the gift of prophecy. You begin to speak words about your future. Instead of saying, ah, we are dead. Ah, I'm finished. Hey, this life. Why did they give birth to me? No, you begin to prophesy God's word. Praise God. It is to your what? To your advantage. So the first thing is that the Holy Spirit bears witness that we are the sons of God. That's the first ministry of the Holy Ghost. The next one. Uh, Ephesians 1.13. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? Ephesians 1.13. Say amen if you're here. Amen. All right. Let's go to Ephesians 1.13. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This broadcast is made possible by friends and partners of Present Truth. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. God bless you. Praise God. Now, I just want to say this because, you know, sometimes people can take your message to the, to the other end. 
uh, I, I just need to also bring a balance here. If you are going to get married to someone, only you cannot be convinced. Okay? So you don't also use that spiritual, uh, uh, charismatic thing to bully people and say, the Lord has shown me. If the Lord has shown you, the Lord can still show the other person. Is that okay? So you, 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 can't, you can't just come and say, the Lord has spoken to me. No, the Lord needs to speak to both of you because you're not the only one getting married. Are you following what I'm saying? So sometimes you have to allow God also work in others because the spirit in you must also be a witness in the other person that... <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Every just one thirty. Maybe I should do a relationship seminar. Safe. In him, you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation. In whom also, having believed, look at this, having believed, you heard the gospel of salvation. Having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So when a man gets born again and believes the gospel, immediately he is sealed with the Holy Ghost. Look at what he says in verse 14. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise and glory of his name? So I've shown you two things to show that you have the Holy Spirit immediately when you get born again. Number one, it is the Holy Spirit that bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. Number two, immediately you get born again, the Holy Spirit seals you. It is like the deposit, the guarantee that you are God's child until the redemption of your body. So... Why did I show you these two scriptures? These two scriptures are key scriptures to show you that the Holy Spirit is residing in you already. And if the big H is residing in you already, it means that the fruits of the Spirit are there. And it also means that what? The gifts of the Spirit is in you. Praise God. So you have these two things in you, resident in you already. Okay, so now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. Or let's go back to 1 Corinthians, refresh our mind with that, and then we have five more minutes. Let's do two scriptures. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7, refresh our mind, and then we go to Ephesians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. But the manifestation, the expression... The phanerosis of the Spirit is given to how many people? How many people? All or what? Each one. The, the, the Greek rendering actually is each one. That's, that's more of a better translation. For the prophet or for the prophet of all. Now go with me to... Uh, you know 1 Corinthians 6.19. Let's, let's do 1 Corinthians 6.19. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 6.19. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What does it say? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is where? Say that loud and clear. Who is where? In you. In you, whom you have from God. Did you see that? He says, your body right now, as you're seated there, he says, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you whom you have from God. Praise God. Go to 1 Corinthians 3, 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Look at this. He says, do you not know that you are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, can you see that in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, the Bible says the Spirit of God dwells in you. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says the Holy Spirit whom God gave. Saying the same thing. Just to establish that the Holy Ghost is in you. And if he's in you, he came with the gifts and the fruits. Now let's go to Ephesians 4, 7. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7. But to each one of us, grace 
was given according to the measure of Christ's gifts. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. First Peter 4, 10. And as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Verse 11. If anyone speaks, let him speak as oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as, as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Go back to verse 10, and we'll wrap up there. Verse 10. As each one has received the gift, minister it to one another. So you realize that every one of us seated here tonight has got the gifts. The Holy Spirit is in us. And it's come with the fruits and the gifts. And all we need to do is to do what? To learn how to yield to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise God. The challenge we have sometimes, and we talked about the divisions of the gift. We'll do that on Sunday before we build up. I want to wrap up here because my time is up. But you see, the challenge we, we have is that we have a set mind in our mind that, okay, this is the way the gift manifests. Or, you know, that brother is very spiritual, so the gifts are in him. But me, no, 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 no. God has not given me. No, it's the big H. The Holy Ghost is in you already. The gifts are there. The fruits are there. You not just learn how to yield to them. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes you discover that there are times. Now, what happens is that if you're a man of the Spirit, you spend more time praying in tongues, you spend more time fellowshipping, studying the Word, listening to messages, what's going to happen? You're going to find out that it's easy for you to yield to the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And I'll give you an example. For instance, sometimes I teach, and I'm teaching like I just mentioned about marriage. I mean, it's not in my note. But just realize that sometimes I'm teaching, and then the Holy Ghost makes me to give an example or gives a, a, a word of not or gives an example or say something or for some few minutes emphasize a certain truth you realize that there's someone in the congregation that to that person that's a word of knowledge praise god so i didn't need to come and say you know the the, the, the most of the challenges we're having is somehow is the drama we are putting around everything you know, somebody wants to prophesy in like, oh, okay, God, yes, sir, yes, sir, okay, okay. And in your mind, you're like, how will I hear God like that? You know, you hear somebody say, as I'm talking to you, God is talking to me. And then, so he puts it in a very mystified way. And you are feeling like, I can never go to the point where God, I mean, I'll tell you something. I, I've been in meetings where I've given words of knowledge. Sometimes I just have an impression, like the Sunday before this, before I traveled, I just felt an impression, oh, there's a baby here with pain in the nose. You know, I didn't say, oh, hold on, hold on, pause, stop the music, God is speaking. I, I, you see, it says the spirit that is in us is so we can cry, Abba, Father. Are you following what I'm saying? Some of you have even walked in these gifts, you didn't know that it was the gift of the spirit working. Somebody just came to you. I'm having this issue. I'm having that. And you say, okay, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. I'm not talking about natural counsel now. And you just give the counsel. And the person applied. And the problem went off. Maybe that's the word of wisdom at work. But you didn't know. Praise the name of the Lord. So the functioning of the gift of the spirit every time, is not, it doesn't have to be dramatic. Sometimes it can, but it doesn't have to. Are, are you following what I'm saying? And if we will grow in this gift you see that we'll minister to one another. As you're talking to your brother, the gifts are just flowing. And before you know, we will edify ourselves and build ourselves up. That is why a believer must not be a talkative. You must, you must be calm to allow the gifts go through you. Praise God. It's not that somebody comes to you for counseling before he's finished, say, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I know where the problem is. That is how one of my own could No, you've missed it. You've missed it. Sometimes it's okay to tell people, I've heard what you say. Give me some time to pray about them. And what are you doing? You're yielding yourself to the gifts of the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we just activate this gift in the life of our brothers and our sisters. That in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that these gifts will begin to have full expression. 
Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. Purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga. Please call plus 234-805-888-7575. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805. 888-7575 Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email office at pastormax.ng also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.